Hey coaches, welcome back to Football Talk with Coach Chip. Today we're going to be talking about down blocks and why I changed the way I teach the tracks in the gap down backer blocking scheme. But before we get there, let's pay a few bills. Hey, you got an opportunity to support old Coach Chip. Buymeacoffee.com slash Coach Chip. Don't literally slash me. Don't do that. Also, while we're talking about supporting and helping coach chip go ahead and click thumbs up don't even wait for the end of the video you know you're going to like it that's why you're here click on the thumbs up and also share the video with the coaches in your life and make sure you're subscribed i still it's picked up but it still floors me i can't see who you are but i can see through whatever that stuff they do that a lot of the my viewership doesn't subscribe. Come on now. Fear of commitment issues? So go to buymeacoffee.com. Buy me a cup of coffee. I don't drink coffee, but don't tell anybody. But I'll buy something to drink. I promise. Okay. I'll be truthful, forthright, and upfront. So support the channel. Support the podcast. Speaking of the podcast, find it on Spotify and Apple. As I record this, we're getting ready to have a two-parter with Mike D, the referee from New Jersey, he's going to, it was so good. I just had to, I, I edited it, but I didn't edit. It was like a two hour conversation and I cut it down to like two 50 minute conversations with Mike D. It's good stuff. He's, he's a whale of an official from what I've seen and gathered. He's never done one of the games I coached in, but he's up in New Jersey and I've never coached one up there and he's never refereed one down in Alabama or Georgia. But that's a great conversation with Mike D. So that'll be there. If you're watching this on the day that I record it, it'll be there the very next day. Okay. And if you're not, it's up there now. The first one is. The second one will drop next week. All right. Summer freebie. Summer's almost over. Football practice has started all across the fruited plain. You don't like the way practice is going? You want it more orderly? Try this out. It's totally free. It is a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet you download it it's safe i promise then you can fill in your stuff the way you want it and it's set up on five minute periods and that way you stay on schedule and you get done what you want to get done it's great and there's some stuff in there about uh scripting your practices and things like that so you'll you won't be out there grab bagging at practice wasting your time and your kids time and if you're coaching youth football you're also coach you're also wasting the parents time the JET manual is out, as is the OL manual, which came out last summer. The JET manual is going well. 220 pages, really 222, I think, of nothing but JET. Get into every detail. How to block the different blocking schemes, but how the steps the kids take. How do you do this? How do you do that? There are diagrams. There's plenty of video. A lot of us teams that I coach running jet, been running jet since 1992 when it was still called the speed sweep. And of course, all the plays off jet, which in my system is mostly gap down backer, the OL manual for gap scheme blocking, it's still going well, went crazy this summer. It's not too late to get it. You've just started or you're about to start summer practice. You want to change up how you're blocking. You want to get away from whatever it is you're doing. This is a great scheme. And also, too, if you're already blocking gap scheme, you know, they got an issue with this, issue with that, got some troubleshooting in there, like how to fix this, how to fix that. Tons of coaching points. Gets into the nitty-gritty. Both these manuals are available from Football Talk with Coach Chip. Hit me up at siegel.chip at gmail.com. All right, let's talk about what we're going to talk about. Traditional down tracks, the way people, I did it for years until about eight years ago. But before we get into the diagram, there's something I think will help us. Usually I show you the diagrams and we talk through it. And then we get into video to show you what I just showed you. 
but I think it'd be better if I show you the video first and then show it to you because the diagrams are a little bit deceptive. I had to draw them up in a way where you could see the difference. And it's a real subtle difference, but it makes all the difference. Let's look at some video. But before we do that, look at here so you'll see what I'm talking about. It's really pronounced, you see on the diagram, the position step, which is what we're talking about today, as opposed to the old way of doing it, the traditional way of doing it, like that's a bad thing, it's not a bad thing, where they just go straight down on their tracks. Well, I had an issue with odd front team, particularly one that usually the first team on our schedule was much bigger than us every year, a lot more numbers, a lot bigger kids, and they ran an odd front with a lot of fours and four eyes. And so I was trying to, and you know, y'all know I hung my hat on power, counter, buck, and jet. Well, jet, that's not an issue, of course. But the other three, it could be an issue because these guys, these fours and four eyes can really, you know, screw things up for you. And so we toyed around with it, toyed around with it, toyed around with it. And we came up with this through much study and much phone calls and visiting with coaches, a lot of college guys. Uh, one guy that that played for me who went on to play college ball and he talked about the position step and I was kind of opposed to it because I'm thinking like bucket step like you know on outside zone scheme and all that he's now coach it's really subtle now it looks like we're taking great big drop steps here and all that kind of stuff like we're running outside zone the, you'll see on the video we're not and that's why I wanted to I want to show you first what the steps look like right here we'll get into all the diagrams in a minute but let me show you the video real quick. All right, on this one here, we're looking at the right tackle right here. And it's kind of, it's not the best angle. Some of these are pretty good angles and some of them aren't so good. This one's not the best. But if you'll focus in right here on his inside foot, if I just got louder, it's because I leaned into my screen and my mic. Lean in and look at his left foot, his inside foot. He takes a very subtle position step. And he's going to step and then come down. And, and I'll tell you why that matters in the diagrams, not just against odd front teams like you see here, but against other teams too, especially teams that like to stunt. Why that position step, for lack of a better term? I know some guys call it a down step. A lot of your college teams that run zone or duo along with gap scheme will call it like a power step. And I just called it a position step. And in practice, I said, take your step, take your step. And you're going to see a couple of these guys do it wrong because I always want to show you the good, the bad, and the ugly. You see it? Very subtle. Does he pick up that? Well, there, there you go. All he did was turn it a little bit. He didn't even step, step. What you're doing, though, you're giving the defense a chance to show their hand, to tip their hand, if you will. What are they doing? All right, this guy's really like in a five. But if he'd been in a four and he slanted right here, my guy could have got him. And what it allowed him to do is get the front side backer instead of the back side backer. The jet action caused this front, the front side backer to step this way. And because he delayed his start, so to speak, we don't want to slow them down once they get going which is what an issue we were running into with guys that, well, that linebacker was coming and they slow down to let him cross his track so they can block him. But if you take that position step from jump right on the snap, it just some guys just pick it up and put it down. Some guys will take a little more pronounced step. Some guys will just kind of turn it a little bit as they go. And what it does, it gives them position. And we're not staying parallel to the line like a duo or a zone team would do when they take those steps. We'll go ahead and, you know, turning our shoulders because we're trying to get horizontal movement in the gap scheme, not vertical movement. And watch his shoulders will turn as he just pivots a little bit on that inside foot. And this is one of the guys that was in on the ground floor of us going to this because he was, I still remember those practices getting ready for that team that we had to play first game every year. See his shoulders turn? Boom, and now he can pick up play side. The rapper should have been looking inside for that backer that almost made the play. Okay, let's look at another one. All right, now this one is pure power. Watch your right, excuse me, your left tackle 
watch his right foot. And he just picks it up and puts it down a little bit and goes right down in here on his down block. Watch his, watch his inside foot right here, his right foot. Look at that. Picked it up, put it down, and it's turned. It's turned toward the inside on his track angle. And he's still, this guy was in a four and he was able to get across this guy's face. And this is not the fastest kid in town. This is not going to slow him down that much. It gives him a better angle and it gives him position in case this four had slanted inside. He could have picked that four up. And I'll show you on the diagrams what I'm talking about. This may go long, y'all. I'm sorry. You see what I'm talking about? Look where he ends up. Again, he gets front side backer, back side backer, takes himself out of it and gets caught up in the wash. This is where we did it wrong. It's the right, excuse me, left guard. I'm having trouble with my right and left today. The left guard, but watch, he picks up his left foot. Now, this is into the game, and he knew what they were doing. They were getting head up and slanting and things like this, slanting the strength, slanting to the jet motion. And that's why he did it. He's like a 10th grader here. It's a, it's a whale of a block the way he finishes it. But don't step with that outside foot for position. Because what he's doing, he knows this guy. It, it, he said, Coach, I knew he was coming inside. He said he, he'd been doing it the whole time when we looked at it on film the next week. And I said, well, good block. But you got to uh, do that position step with your inside foot. His case, the right foot. But watch his outside foot. You see? He knew, and he gets his shoulders turned appropriately. He knows what we're trying to look right there. Boom, pins him inside, gets the knockdown on it, uses the guy's momentum against him, which is all about the gap down backer system in the manual. It's all up in there. Look at that. It's good stuff, guys. All right, now this is one where we use our Maverick motion to run the power. We line him up wrong, and we motion him over. But I want you to watch the steps Okay, he just picks it up and puts it down. Pick it up and put it down. Again, the right tackle, watch his left foot. And he doesn't have a guy head up him, but that was the step we took every time. I just said when we decided to do it, screw it. We're not going to run, have two different steps. So we'll always take position step. So we're always ready for teams that are head up and want to do a lot of slanting, especially teams that are in fours and four eyes. All right, watch him. Again, right here, right tackle, inside foot. You really got to zoom in on it. See, so pick it up. He puts it down, pointed in that direction, and there he goes. He gets his backside backer. Gap down backer. Again, pick it up. Gain a little ground to the inside and up. Not much. If you look where he started from, see where he is? He's kind of right on that line right there, the 10. When he's done, he's going to be a little bit in front of the 10 with his toe pointed inside, getting his shoulders turned so he can get his horizontal movement. And there he goes. That turned into a six. Now, I've got another one, but I'm not going to show it because those pesky people that own uh, copyrights and all that might say something. But it's Michigan and Georgia a couple of years ago. It was when Michigan played them in the Georgia in the semifinals, and Georgia beat them that year, showing how they used those position steps. The right tackle, literally. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll show. All right. I'm not going to show any movement, so maybe I'll get away with it. I don't know. But it. Pisses me off. Right tackle is going to down block this end. So he goes in a way. He's going to pick that foot up right there like he's going down. The guy's going to squeeze across his face and he gets it. Now that stuff, we didn't do that. That that right there, that's that three-level Star Trek chess stuff right there. But watch the right guard. What a great position step he takes. Well, I'm not going to show it. But he picks it up, puts it down, and pins this guy in here. He picks his up, puts it down, and shuffles a little bit, and this guy comes across his face, and he pins him. But that's we're not into that. But right here was a good one, but that's almost show of that. Let's look at some diagrams. All right, we're already pretty deep in this thing. Like I said, it probably run long. But this is traditional down tracks for the gap down scheme. It's in the manual. I, we cover both of them. If I were coaching, 
sub varsity football, maybe middle school on down, I would probably use this. Now, that's just just my opinion. It's just my opinion. That's what I'd probably do. Now, if I had a very mature line, I don't care if it's 12 and under, they're very efficient and they can handle it, then I would do the other. Okay, so we're not knocking this way of doing it. I did it this way for probably 20 years or more before about 10 years ago going to the one we're talking about, this one. And see, you can tell on the diagram they're much more pronounced because I had to be able to show. There's no way to show you on a diagram, pick them up and put them down or barely move at all. And so I kind of overdid it a little bit on the diagram to show you, kind of over-exaggerate it. But that's why I showed you the video first. But see what they're doing? They're buying an angle where they can start picking people off. Like, look here. So you're a, it's a tight front. And it was the odd front that forced me into doing this. Teams that were giving us issues on our gap scheme by playing the odd fronts. Okay, and to me, the gap scheme is great for odd fronts because they like the odd fronts like the blitz. But, you know, if you're not blocking the linemen, it don't do any good to get those blitz and linebackers. So that's why. But these position steps allow you to pick up stunts. For instance, this 4-I slices inside or just comes straight ahead right here. Your tackle can still get him. And you don't get wasted like these two getting caught up in here and him coming off and the Y thinking, oh, he's got him, and he goes on the linebacker, and the DN comes off the backside of your tackle unblocked, and now your guard, your pulling guard on power or counter has to block him instead of going to their block, and it just screws things up. So that's why these position steps that we went to, I guess, in 15 or 16, 16, I think. I think I toyed with them in 15 and 16 we went to them. I think in 15 we did it for one game. And then we didn't have anybody else that did that, so we never did it again. In 16, I said, screw it, we're going to it. All right, this can happen without a position step. Look what I'm talking about. All right, your guy just hauls butt out of there using the traditional gap down backer track. And he says, he's quick, and he's gone. And he beats the DN. And the DN comes right off his butt. The tight end's blocked down. By the time he gets there, DN's gone. And when he looked up, you know, before the snap, he said, oh, look, the guy's in the four eye. He's inside the tackle. He's not in my gap because this is my gap in gap down backer. So he goes on the linebacker. He hauls butt out of there to linebacker. And, again, you got an unblocked DN at the point of attack, and that ain't good because that ain't worth a dang. So this is, again, why we went to it when we did go eventually to it and I looked at it and I said, how do we do it without losing aggression, without losing, you know, getting off the ball? And the position step was the answer. But the step gives your OL a chance either way. So, for instance, this guy's in a four I or a four, doesn't matter, and he slants out to the C gap. You're tied in taking that step. Boom, great angle. They meet right here and you get movement. Also, position step, tackle doesn't get hung up. Position step, no slant strong, slants right into the guy who took his position step and came. We're not talking about step, pause, see what's going on. We're talking about step and go. Step and go. Just a little step to the inside. I pick him up and put him down. It depends on the kid. I was never one of those coaches who got to do it. Everybody do it this way. You know, some of y'all have seen video where I have some kids on the same team in the same year guards some of them doing skip pull and some of them doing the old-fashioned pull why because i let them do what they needed to do to get where they needed to be i'm not all about it's got to be my way now i haven't talked about centers yet but that's coming all right down blocking tracks the tight end and play side tackles position steps allow them to pick up the dn either way it goes so this is the last two right here and i got them side by side so you can see what i'm talking about if he goes inside your tackles got him he's not a, he's not disappearing just hauling butt out of there. I mean, I, I had times where I had guys that would come out the other, they're just fast as crap and come out the other end, not block us all. So I did my job. So this gave us a better chance at blocking. And maybe it's not an accident that we won a couple of state championships after we went to the position step. Now, I'm not going to argue with anybody about what's best for them because I know some guys that won a ton of football games always doing it that way. We won a bunch of football games doing it the old way. It gives your OL a better chance. No more slowing down. As I told you, I had kids that would slow down to wait for a backer to, to blitz onto their track. 
Well, you don't want that. But if you take that step, then they can fire out of there. It lets things develop. Now they can see what the defense is doing. They can see better who they're probably going to end up blocking. It allows the linebacker to blitz onto the down blocking lineman's track, as in right here. If he doesn't come, he stays on his track and gets backside backer. You saw the videos. So a couple times, we got the front side backer. Why? Because of position step. It lets the defense tip their hand, as I mentioned in the video segment of the, of the video. We were watching clips. Look right here. He took the position step. And here he comes on his track. Now he can see that wheel linebacker doing that loop stunt from the backside to the front side of the play. Or he saw the guard pull. I didn't draw the guard up in these because I didn't want to just clutter up the, the picture. He sees the guard pull, so now he's going play side following the guard. And because of that position step, he can get him. Position step worked well for your tight end right here. What about the center? I told you we'd get to him, and here we go. I, I had a guy hit me up on Messenger. And he had great question about, because he and his O-line guy, this guy's been coaching for 18 years, but he and his O-line guy debating how to block trap. And it doesn't matter to me, it's any of them. You know, do we want to go straight back like we did on the other video? Look, straight back. Here's what I've done for years. We blocked back. I didn't position step. We did not position step with the center. I said, I want everybody doing it the same way. Centers are different cats, y'all. You know, you don't want to mess up the snap because you, they got to take that step. No. So we just had them block back flat on everything and to account for run throughs as they're blocking back flat, their eyes are on the backside backer, or it could be an odd front and it could be, I mean, it could be a three, three stack and it could be the mic blitzing here could be the stack wheel blitzing here. If it's a three, three stack eyes in that a gap as your body is going back to the DN. Now, if you've got a dude playing backside tackle that's going to gap hinge that four-eye, you ain't got to worry about it. You can do other things. But here's an example. The wheel fired when the guard pulled, whether he's wrapping or whether he's kicking on counter, wrapping on power or kicking on counter, he's gone. Your backside guard and gap scheme is gone most of the time. As he stepped back, because his eyes are here, he saw wheel firing, so he stops, boom, and picks him up. That's what I'm talking about. You say, what do they bring that guy in there to? Old rule of coaching O-line, first threat. Who's the furthest one from the point of attack? Point of attack's right here. This guy right here coming through, he's definitely first threat. Now, this guy here, well, the player, if he runs it down, he runs it down. If we can't gap hinge him on the backside, he comes through hard right here. But I'd be checking those dudes out. They're bringing this guy and bringing this guy on a pinch. Anyway, we got to say work something on that back side there. Maybe counter back the other way. Hello? But this is what I do with the centers. And it's kind of off subject a little bit, but it's funny that I was prepping for this and planning on making this video today. For the last few weeks, I've been putting this together. And then all of a sudden, this guy sends me a message asking about it. That's what I would do or... If you've got a dude that can do it on the backside, he's going to gap, hinge that D in, and you're not worried about him, you can do it this way. Now, again, my default is block back with the center always. That way you're good against an even front, over front, under front, odd front, 3-3 three, three stack, 3-4, three, whatever. You're good at it. But if you can do that, have him come off through the backside shoulder of the nose with eyes on him. If he doesn't come... No need to block him. If he stays flat, your track blocks on the front side will pick him up. And you stay on your double team. And the track, and look here, the position step gives you a better angle on that double team. So he's blocking the play side of him. He's blocking the back side of him. But his eyes are right here looking through that gap that can get our butt beat right through here. See that? I prefer the previous method that we talked about. Blocking back with eyes on that backer or backers. If it's if you just got your eyes in that gap, you'll pick up whether it's a stack, you know, coming or a wheel or a mic, whatever. All right, that's it. Didn't go as long as I thought we would there for a little bit. The jet manual is out. Be sure to get your copy of it. Also, 
good companion piece because so many of the plays that we run off the jet are gap scheme plays. And we'll do a package. I had a guy the other day bought everything I had. You know, every, every one of them is 30 and $50. The jet manual is $50. The, uh, the other manuals are 30 apiece. He wanted all of them and plus a bunch of the other resources. So we just did a package. We just bundled it like I'm some kind of cable company or something. I don't know. Siegel.chip at gmail.com. These are selling like crazy. Don't worry. They won't run out. Okay. They're eBooks. I'll just send it to you. So the offensive line manual for gap scheme blocking, the jet manual, they're out there. If you want to dive deeper into these concepts or want help installing them, I'm here for you. I'm doing in-person or Zoom clinics, consultations, installs. If you're not too far away, I'll come see you. If you're a fur piece, we'll Zoom it up. I told you I'll Zoom with a, a group out of Europe that coached American football last week, and we're doing it again this week. And we'll just we'll, we'll talk it through it. It, it. You're in charge. Just tell me what you want. Don't forget buymeacoffee.com slash Coach Chip. Go over there and hit it up. And don't forget the podcast, Football Talk with Coach Chip, the podcast on Apple and Spotify. All right, here's a list, an updated list of the freebies from Football Talk with Coach Chip. All you got to do is hit me up at the email address at the bottom of the screen. I'll get it to you post haste. That uh, In English, that means I'll get it to you right away. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Just take a screenshot of this list, look at it later. I think you can see it because my eyes are horrible and I can see it, but it's a screenshot of the list from on my computer. All right, coaches, that's it for this episode of Football Talk with Coach Chip. Until next time, y'all be elite.